On the internet, there's a lot of people saying a lot of things, but how many of them are actually true? When you're on the internet, you can really say pretty much anything you want to say, and a lot of people make up stuff. But then a lot of stupid people on the internet, because it's the internet, believe it. So today we're going to go through an iceberg that lays out a lot of these internet hoaxes that have happened that have really tricked a lot of people. Starting with this man. So in 2008, there was a launch of a website called thisman.org, and on the website there is a picture of a sketch of a man, right? And the headline on it said, ever dream this man? Every night throughout the world, hundreds of people dream about this face. Which is honestly terrifying, imagining like, not only there being a face that a lot of people have dreamed about, like just that being a thing that's happened, but then also imagining yourself dreaming that and seeing the same face. Like, I know that it's obviously fake, right? Because it's on this iceberg, but I don't know, that's, that's kind of creepy to me. And then also, isn't there like a movie about that now with like Nicolas Cage? I haven't seen it, but I've heard about that. <laughs> Anyways, so the origin of this thing is actually really interesting and it goes more than just some guy <laughs> wanting to do it just for fun. So the story goes that there was a psychiatrist in New York City, right, in 2006, who one of his patients, he was talking to him and he was talking about his dreams, the psychiatrist, right? And he was describing this face that he's seen multiple times and he got like a sketch artist or whatever to like draw out the face, right? And then another one of his patients had walked by and saw the picture and the other patient was like, how do you have that image, I've seen that same man in my dreams. So then he was like, whoa, like this might be a real thing, the psychiatrist. So then he put the picture online, which is why the website was created according to the story. And then according to the website, 8,000 people worldwide have come forward and claimed to have seen this man in their dreams. So on the website, there's a lot of collected stories and drawings from people who dreamt of this man. By the way, the website is still up. You can go, like, you can like still go to it if you want to. Like, it's still like a real website. There's a page for the portraits where there's just like a bunch of drawings that other people have made of the same face pretty much. And then if you go to the dreams tab, there's a lot of like, what's the word? Um, testimonials from people who have come forward. Like one reads, for example, I dreamt this man was Brazilian and very handsome. He was a school teacher with six fingers in his right hand. He said if the US had a nuclear disaster, go north. That was the quote from, from one of the freaking things on here. Oh my God. Wait, I'm just, I'm just seeing this one right now. This one reads, I've never had homosexual sexual relationships or even fantasies, but I dream about sexing with this man all the time. I must admit he has a lot of imagination and he pleases me. Sometimes when I wake up, I discover I have had a- okay, you, you can see it on screen. <laughs> Some of these are weird, man. Like one of these is like saying that this person saw him in the dream, but they think that he's like ugly, but they still fall in love <laughs> with him every time. Anyways, I'm like, I gotta get off this page. <laughs> then the website also has a lot of theories on the theories page about like why why it is happening. These theories range from pretty mundane things to like supernatural things. Like one of them says that this man is an image of the creator, like God. <laughs> and then one of them quotes Jung. Or, wait, I pronounced it wrong in the last video. There was one video where I was talking about Jung, like the psychologist, and y'all were like pissing your pants because I misspelled or I, I mispronounced his name. I'm Googling it right now for you guys, okay? Oh, it's Jung, okay, it's Jung. Anyways, one of the theories on the website, like the website puts out is uh, a quoting Jung's psycho and analytic theory, saying that this man is an archetypal image belonging to the collective unconscious that can surface in times of hardship, like emotional development or whatever. But anyways, these are all just complete bullcrap, which we'll get to here in a second. But I do want to go through the rest of these theories, because I think they're all really interesting for like what it puts out. One of these, called the dream surfer theory, says that this is like an actual person who can surf into people's dreams. Like he can just like infiltrate them, like uh, Inception, and just like hang out in there. One of them is an imitation theory theory that says that like when people have heard about other people seeing this man in their dreams they start to see the same man just to imitate or whatever which is probably the most plausible one if this is actually like if this was actually true that wouldn't make the most sense to me and then this website and the whole thing really went viral and like got a lot of attention in october of 2009 and that's when it became like a, an internet household name but then guess what guys guess what i know this is going to come as a surprise to all of you guys but it was later exposed that this man was a hoax it was a guerrilla marketing campaign made by Andrea Natella, who is an Italian sociologist and marketer. And guerrilla marketing, by the way, just means marketing that's not like traditional. Like it's not TV ads or like internet ads or whatever. It's a way of marketing that's supposed to be a lot cheaper and you like use more like psychological ways to get in people's minds rather than actually using a lot of money on your campaign. So basically what this whole thing was is like she was testing how to get in people's minds and get like to like spread the word of something, right? To like make this phenomenon. 
on. Like, uh, Google says, innovative, unconventional, and low-cost marketing techniques aimed at obtaining maximum exposure. So it turns out that Andrea Nutella based the original sketch of this man on her father. Wait, is it- wait, is it a him? Oh my god, is Andrea a him? Hold on. Okay, I may have just misgendered Andrea. I apologize. I just assumed because of the first name, but it's a him, so him. Anyways, he he based the original sketch on a photo of his young father. So apparently he was just really into the idea of dream invasion, like Inception, like I said earlier, and he just wanted to explore the internet's power to create urban legends. Like he wanted to see how the internet could really take an interesting and creepy idea and like blow it up and then use that for actual marketing. And then this hoax actually goes a lot farther than just like what it actually does. Like this hoax inspired a lot of like memes obviously and even a manga series apparently there's a whole manga series dude i didn't even realize this there's a whole manga series about about this man.org and it was confirmed to be a hoax by nutella all the way back in 2010 so i'm kind of late to the party in this one i guess but it was on the iceberg so i guess i had to cover it or whatever the momo challenge so before i say anything here at first i'm just gonna throw a huge allegedly over everything i'm about to say because it's on a hoax iceberg obviously but i'm just gonna tell the story but with a big allegedly over it, so just keep that in mind. So the Momo challenge was a challenge, like a viral trend that spread across social media that got kids to commit self-harm. And there's actually a lot of similarities between this one and the Blue Whale challenge. And the Blue Whale challenge was like a Russian trend or whatever that got people to like kill themselves. Basically what happened with the Blue Whale challenge is in November of 2015, a Russian teenager posted a selfie with the caption, quote, Nia Bai, and then died by suicide. And then her death became like sensationalized I guess on the internet like people were talking about it and they eventually tied it to this quote-unquote blue whale challenge. So anyways back to the Momo challenge this one started in 2016. So the Momo challenge was a challenge that involved a character named Momo that would encourage children to commit self-harm and commit suicide. So there were discussions and news reports in South America and India about children that were engaging in self-harm because of messages that they got on WhatsApp from a character named Momo. So the entire world at this point was like freaking out about this Momo character because again of the news reports from South America and India about someone on WhatsApp named Momo telling kids to kill themselves. And there's even, I think it was like a police officer. Yeah, a police officer in Ohio <laughs> saw the character of Momo in his son's version of the game. Like, like he saw his son play Minecraft and Momo was in it. And it was just, like, it was like a mod of Minecraft. There's a Momo Minecraft mod or whatever. But then this thing was so serious that Microsoft even announced that they were taking measures, quote unquote, to restrict access to the mod. Like, this this is like a huge thing. And it became so widespread that in 2018, there were public warnings issued in Argentina, Germany, Luxembourg, Spain, Canada, Mexico, the United States, and France about this Momo challenge. Which, by the way, still had no evidence. It was just these, like, news reports and stuff talking about this person on WhatsApp convincing kids to kill themselves. So, basically, everybody was just pissing their pants over this, this little character, this little bird, which we're gonna get into the picture later, and more details about that. Because the picture is actually scary as hell. But yeah, whoever invented this thing had literally the entire world panicked. And then just to show how it even spread like further than just the governments, Kim Kardashian, like the Kim Kardashian, posted on her Instagram story literally pleading, like begging YouTube to remove the Momo videos. Which rather for context, at that point people had reported seeing Momo like pop up on a variety of like YouTube videos and stuff about Peppa Pig and Fortnite, <laughs> which is so crazy. But then obviously it was just all a hoax. The founder of the fact-checking site, Snopes, is his name is David Mickelson. He said he doubts that anybody actually came to any harm and that the whole thing, quote, may primarily be a product of bullies and pranksters latching onto a handy mechanism to goad and torment vulnerable youngsters rather than an intrinsic part of a particular social media challenge. Which, uh, that's a bunch of big words, I don't know what that really means, but basically this whole thing was just made up by, like, internet trolls just trying to mess with people, which I, I think, I think it's hilarious because nobody actually got hurt from this thing, so I think it's okay to laugh at it. I think it's hilarious. Oh my god, wait, I'm doing research right now and it says that YouTube demonetizes any videos mentioning Momo or that it like they did in 2018 so I might be screwed over for this one guys actually which is why you got to go join my patreon okay so like I said where did the picture come from like this horrifying bird thing so this picture of this Momo bird was actually a sculpture by a Japanese special effects company called link factory which by the way did anybody else notice that this bird has boobs like I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put it on screen right now for this right but look she has boobs I never realized that what the hell dude and then also SNL apparently did a sketch about Momo in 2019 <laughs> 
<laughs> Which is hilarious, bro, that SNL got a hold of this thing. I feel like a loser for even talking about it once the SNL has already talked about it. But anyways, yeah, it was a complete myth that nobody got harmed from the Momo challenge, and it was honestly hilarious as hell. So, John Titor. Okay, before we even get into this one fully, I just want to say how stupid people were back in the day, like on the internet. Because like this one, what I'm about to explain about this one, like if this happened today, not even if, th this happens like hundreds of times every single day on like Instagram and like everywhere, like, like on Discord and stuff. Like this happens all the time. And I guess back in 2000, they just like, it, it was different. Like the landscape was different on the internet. Anyways, so back in 2000, there was this forum online called Time Travel Institute, right? And in November of 2000, someone with the username time travel underscore zero started posting. Now these were just discussing time travel in general, but what's important about these first posts is that this poster used this symbol, which is a military insignia, which we're gonna get more into detail later on about what exactly this is. So the first time the actual name John Titor showed up was in 2001 in January, when that time travel underscore zero person started posting on the Art Bell forums, and this forum in particular actually required a pseudonym or some kind of like actual like first and last name to post. So this person chose John Titor. And basically in these posts, Titor claimed to be an American soldier from the year 2036 from Florida. He said that he was assigned to a governmental time travel project and that as part of the project, he was sent back to 1975 to get an IBM 5100 computer, which was needed to debug like legacy computer programs that existed in 2036, which he could have been talking about the uh, like year 2032 or 2038 problem, which is that like a lot of old computers, the, the time would only go up to the year 2038. And so it was kind of like, 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 you guys remember like the, uh, the thing when the Mayan calendar only counted up to like 2011 or whatever. And people were like, oh my God, the world's going to end in 2011 because the calendar's not going far enough. Like it's like the same thing, but for computers, because some of the computers don't have like a program that lets the time go past 2038. So people think that in 2038, all the computers are just going to like break like a lot of old computers or whatever. But anyways, but then you might be thinking if he had to go back to 1975 to get the computer, why is he hanging out in 2000 and 2001? He said that he stopped in that year for quote personal reasons, which was to collect pictures lost in the Civil War and to visit his family. Which by the way, Civil War, we're gonna get into that later because there's a there's a whole thing with that. <laughs> Some other interesting things he said is that he said that he'd been trying to tell people for several months to avoid beef products pretty much because of some disease called the Kretzfeld Jacob disease, which y'all are gonna y'all are gonna kill me in the comments for mispronouncing that screw you guys um <laughs> just kidding just kidding just kidding i love you guys obviously i'm just kidding so here's where it gets really interesting titor actually described his time machine on several occasions and he described exactly what you need to make one so i'm gonna read that out to you right now two magnetic housing units for the dual micro singularities an electron injection manifold to alter mass and gravity of the micro singularities a cooling and x-ray venting system gravity sensors four main cesium clocks and three main computer units. I don't know what the hell a computer unit is. Um, and also apparently he uh, he like backed the future did because he said that it was installed in the rear of a 1966 Chevrolet Corvette. So the first thing he said, or not the first, but I guess like the, the most immediate, like in history, like the one that would happen first from when he started posting is a civil war in the United States. He predicted to happen in 2005. Now he said this would happen because of a civil unrest due to the presidential election of 2004. By the way, I missed because I said it happened in 2005. It starts in 2005, according to him. And then the actual war, like, erupts in 2008. And then the United States was split into five regions after this. And then according to Titor, the Civil War would end in 2015 with a brief but intense World War III that he referred to as in day. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm going too in-depth on this one, but I just think it's so funny. And also, this one I've heard about before, but I never knew, like, all these details about. So I'm hoping that I can, you know, educate some people on, on these, like, a more interesting details that I had no idea about until I started researching this. Okay, this one, this one disproves it for me personally. He said that Omaha, Nebraska would be the new US capital after 2015. Um, I don't, do, do anybody actually, like, do people live there? Isn't that where, uh, Saul Goodman went after, after, you know, after Breaking Bad? Yeah, he went to Nebraska, bro. So I guess there's some people there, or whatever. Nebraska is the 38th most populated, so it's, like, in the bottom, like, 12. Yeah, bro, nobody lives there. But then, of course, because he, like, you, you can't predict this stuff, right? Because obviously this is fake, he invoked what he called the mini worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, where he's saying like that him going back in time is gonna like not exactly be in the same timeline, he's going to a different timeline because of quantum mechanics or whatever. So basically saying like, oh, all these things they're predicting are happening
happening in my timeline. Not in yours, so that actually won't happen to you guys. Well, it might not. I guess we'll see. Which is so stupid that people actually believed it, you know? Like, I mean, I don't know if anybody believed it, but just the fact that this is still a well-known story. Like, this happens on Reddit every single day, bro. And people were actually, like, researching this, though. There's an Italian, like, TV show called Voyager A Caffini della Conoscenza that in 2008, it aired the results of an investigation of Jean Titor. Like, people were actually researching this and, like, investigating it. What the hell? But then, guess what, guys? We actually somewhat figured out who it was. Like, we have a pretty good idea of who actually made these things. This guy named Larry Haber and his brother Richard, who was a computer scientist, are most likely the people who were, like, the people posting the John Titor things. <laughs> Hey, and now we are going from layer one to layer two, mostly known. Grackle Simpson. Okay, so before I even started doing this like video, like researching it, I hadn't, I didn't, never heard about this, right? But this is one of my favorite things ever from what I'm seeing, right? And I don't know, like, cause when I'm seeing, I'm like researching, I'm gonna look at like Wikipedia or whatever. Like on my research, I can't see anything bad about this, you know? Like if the creator of it was like a pedophile or something. So if anything there is bad about this, I do not like this. But if what I'm seeing is correct, and that's it. This is like one of my favorite things to ever happen on the internet. Okay, so you guys know the Mandela effect, right? Where it's like, oh my god, the, the fruit of the loom doesn't have the cornucopia. Or like, oh my god, Pikachu doesn't have a black spot on the end of his tail. Like that, right? This is, this is just like a Mandela, like a Mandela effect troll. And it's so funny. So Greggle Simpson, or Gumbly is his other name, is, is, is purportedly supposed to be in The Simpsons. But here's the thing, he never was. Basically, is this huge troll where people on the internet are trying to convince other people that this character was in the show and that oh you don't remember it because it's the Mandela effect it's so funny this is like ultimate gaslighting on like a huge level so how it started is that in late 2015 an anonymous user on a Japanese text board thing called 2 channel took screenshots of the Simpsons right and then put this character in the screenshots as like fake proof and then a whole six years later in 2021 is the first example of there being an English version of this like an English reference to it, which of course is on 4chan, where there would be these like, I can, I'll try to find some and put them on screen, these like fake screenshots of the Simpsons with this character in it, and <laughs> just be told people, oh yeah, you, you you just missed it. So a few of the theories that people like gave out as like reasons for why they never knew this character is because either he was removed due to poor viewer reception and that he was actually retconned out of the show, or that he was added late in the show as like a way to like make fun of the show because it got like really bad towards the end, people say. I don't know, I've never seen the Simpsons, bro, I'll be real. I love family guy but i never seen the simpsons and futurama goes crazy anyways i can just i can just imagine so many like kids out there who have like never even seen the simpsons like go like to their like middle school telling people oh my god did you guys know there is a removed character from the simpsons and it's so funny to me that this is going on i love this if you do this you're awesome and hilarious this is literally just like my sense of humor i gaslight people all the time when i'm talking to anybody i'll be like no you're wrong bro what do you mean like okay i can't think of any specific examples right now but if you join my discord in the description and get in the VC with me because I joined the VC a bunch. I will tell you stories of this because I, I swear I've done, I swear dude. It's so funny because people believe me. People are so stupid. People are so gullible. Anyways, uh, moving on to the next one. This one's kind of short. 2020 vision. This one's definitely weird, especially when we get more deep into it. So 2020 vision is a YouTube channel created by a guy named Kai who also runs the channel Weird Side. Now apparently this whole thing is some kind of ARG, but I'll explain it how it seemed people on the internet at the time. Because now we know that it was all part of an ARG, but initially we didn't know that. So basically he would upload videos that predicted celebrity deaths. Like he would upload a video like months before a celebrity died, right? And it would just say the date flashing on the screen with like an eye next to it. And then it, it would be like accurate, right? And it was like, how the hell did this guy do this, right? Cause like the celebrity would die, you would go like check the channel and then the video would already be there, right? And it would have been like uploaded like months ago. But here's the thing, here's how he did it. Basically he would upload these videos ahead of time, right? And be posting constantly. But then on YouTube, you can upload a video, but you can make it not public. So it stays just on your channel, but nobody can see it. So then once you like make it official, like you make it public, the upload date won't change pretty much. Like basically if you edit a video after it's already uploaded, technically, the upload date won't change and it won't tell anybody this edited. So it looks like he's predicting it, but he's actually not predicting anything. So that's how he did it. But he's also a cult leader. <laughs> Let me explain. So 
in 2019, he started this website that was just like an IP address that had a bunch of puzzles on it. And then in 2020, he would create a Discord server called the Pink Eye Discord server. And when you get in that server, in order to be let into the rest of the server, you have to do like a verification thing, right? And a lot of Discord servers do that. But on this one, for the verification thing, you would have to say, quote, I pledge my eternal allegiance to the Pink Eye. And then I'm gonna be real, bro. This stuff is so confusing to me. This bro built a machine that has unreadable numbers on it and the numbers are supposed to go on like one of the puzzles online right which is still so weird but then apparently the plan reveals that the machine can be used to put all of humanity's knowledge into the first humans that appeared in africa 1.25 million years ago and it, it can do this because one of the people who don't like him they want to like fight him and like stop his evil plan or whatever so they want to prevent pink the pink eye from ever formulating the evil plan so they want to use his machine against him to go back and i don't know bro he did diss tracks too like he, he did diss tracks against his the the enemies of his cult this guy is just a weird freak cultist bro okay <laughs> um i don't want to go into this this is this is kind of scary dude but you know what just for you guys i'll go a little bit deeper because i guess i'm a youtuber or whatever so i gotta go deep okay so in that server of his cult there emerged a team pink and a team black like a civil war in it and then the black team in 2021 came up with a plan to take down 2020 vision and that plan is what i was telling you about about the uh going back in time to like let the original humans from a million years ago know about this so that they can prevent it and then team black like their leader instructed them to write a haiku and input coordinates into the machine like the machine that 2020 vision built right the coordinates lead to the double six cafe in london and the unix time converts to wednesday october 5th 2016 10 15 a.m and then he further and then black the, and then team black further explains that obviously October 5th 10 15 a.m was the moment when 2020 vision first expressed his plan to wipe out humans and replace them with monkeys obviously right and so at this point on like that that same day they put in the correct coordinates and then 2020 vision's machine quit responding and like turned off so they won i guess and then also apparently in the server you could become a heretic if you want to denounce pink eye yeah that's uh that's most of it um i feel like i'm gonna get death threats if i say anything else because this is scary i'm gonna leave it at that grave robbing for morons so this is a video that was uploaded online of a guy teaching you how to rob graves from the title obviously and it's really creepy it's like this low poly low quality like pixelated video and it looks real as hell like it the way that it's shot the way he's talking it just seems so real it's so creepy and nobody really knows if it's real or if his advice is real but the story behind it is really interesting so first let me set the stage for what life was like before the internet which i know i'm not the right one to talk about it because i'm a gen z loser who made a video about skibbity toilet but but whatever just get in the mindset of how before the internet media was shared through books and cds and dvds and vhs tapes and cassettes and all that stuff like we didn't have anything else like on the internet we didn't have the internet to like watch stuff on youtube or whatever or to share things on forums and so because of this there were a lot of like bootlegging organizations and like rings i guess of people who like traded illegal dvds and cds and stuff or maybe not even illegal but just like rare and like not officially released stuff like hard to get hard to get your hands on you know like for example recordings of concerts that were unable to be seen otherwise and then because of this there's one really famous dvd that came out of this bootlegging operation that has like been famous and like popular and it's called ensuring your place in hell so nobody actually knows what's on the first part of this dvd there are two parts to it and nobody knows what's on the first part but the second part has been ripped onto the internet and it, like a thousands of people have seen it. The second part was a compilation video made up of four different home movies. The first one is called Cooking with Huck Boat Co, which is just like a little creepy horror short film thing. It was like a home video of like a young guy telling you how to make bake goods for family members that you don't like, like like like, like how to cook for people that you don't like, <laughs> right? So he would use like roadkill in his in his cooking. But then this one was later on confirmed to be an art project by a guy who ended up working in Hollywood on like The Last Exorcism and stuff. So that was an art project. The next video on it is called Exploding Varmints, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, this one was made by a company based out of Redding, California. The next one is called Mortuary of the Dead, which is pretty, like, enigmatic and mysterious. This one takes place in, like, it kind of looks like a third world mortuary, and the video is, like, a home video of, like, a bunch of dudes exploring it, and a bunch of corpses. And this one nobody knows. This one is still kind of hard to tell if it's real or fake or not, so I guess we don't know about that one yet. But then the fourth and final video on part two of this DVD 
DVD is grave robbing for morons. It's 27 minutes, by the way, which I think people forget how long this video is. And what's really interesting with it is that like the video quality sucks, right? But I think that where it comes from is like just how much has been ripped, you know? Like, you know how if you're scrolling on like TikTok, right? And you'll see like a clip from a YouTube video, like uh, like one of those like gaming channels, or whatever, who like play games and it has like the little the subtitles or whatever and things like that where like, or even not just that, just like things on TikTok or whatever, like you'll see it and it just is in like so low quality because the video is uploaded not by the person who made it, but it's uploaded by like some other re-uploader. So the video has been downloaded like a million times by people, right? And then because of that, it just keeps getting compressed and the like video quality just gets so bad. I'm pretty sure like that's why that like this video looks like that, right? Because not because the actual quality was bad when it was recorded, but it's just because it's been ripped so many times, right? It was discovered on a DVD that was a compilation of a bunch of weird, scary videos. So who knows how many times it's been like physically burned from DVD to DVD to DVD to DVD back in the day, you know? But anyways, the video picks up and like starts mid thought with like the person in it, like, like this like young guy talking. Like it starts in the middle of a sentence. This guy has like a New York accent and he looks to be like between 15, 16 to like maybe early 20s. Like it's hard, it's kind of hard to tell, you know, cause it's like potato quality. He also has like a speech impediment of some kind. Like it's hard to tell exactly what it is because of how you know low quality the video is. And also just I'm stupid. I'm not like a psychiatrist or <laughs> no, 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 not, not a psychiatrist. I'm not a speech language pathologist. So I don't know what the thing is, like what the condition is. But anyways, that's not important. And so the, the obvious thing in this video that you'll notice at first is that the bro is holding a skull <laughs> the whole time. And it looks to be like a real dirty human skull. But again, it's kind of hard to tell because of how low quality the image is. And it begins with him describing the process of like how to clean a human skull and how to prepare it for sale at like a black market. But the way he's talking is kind of like he's like, like he's trying to be cool. You know, like, you know, like that one kid at school that hangs out with you and your friends, but he's kind of a loser and he's like probably like a, a grade younger than you, you know? I don't know, I'm talking because I'm a high schooler, but just like in my experience, like it, people who are like younger than you and they're like trying to act cool, like, oh my God, dude, I, like a little, little poi story here. I was hanging out with one of my friends. We went to McDonald's and this one kid was coming in and his parent was like in the car and they were like doing like a DoorDash order. And he was like, like he like went to grab in the DoorDash order. And he saw me, my friend, right? And I'm like 17, so we're like big kids or whatever. This kid was like maybe like nine or 10. And bro started cussing up a storm at us. He was like, okay, I'm not gonna say it, but you can imagine he was like, this effing McDonald's effing S like he's going crazy at us like just like trying to seem cool it was so funny but anyways like the, the guy in this video you can tell is kind of like trying to sound cooler almost which is kind of funny but I mean I don't really I don't really blame him we all want to be cool right but then anyways the actual video is like how to prepare a skull for sale like he, he's like saying like oh so you you gotta clean this part off and you're gonna need to use this to, to do this to, to to sell it in the black market and then he actually gives his name too he says Anthony Kaz something but it's like he thinks twice before like stopping himself, you know, because he doesn't want to like give away his full name or whatever. So I feel like most people think this is just like a hoax, you know, because Anthony's advice is absolutely awful. Like at one point, I think he he tells you if you have like witnesses to hit him on the head so they'll think it's a dream, which is like stupid. <laughs> and also the whole vibe of it, because like in the video, he's not by himself. He has like has like friends around, at least one friend. He, like we see this one guy's face like a little bit. So it could it does kind of sound like he's just like trying to be cool around his friends, you know, because he uses phrases like getting laid, you know, which is so cool to teenagers. But then again, to be fair, is that like this video is like it's shot the way that it looks, the quality, the fact that he has a VHS copy of Evil Dead 2 on a table next to him. They're like, like, like what Anthony is wearing, like the whole scene looks like it's genuinely from that time period, right? So personally, 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 my theory is that it was just some teenagers hanging out in like the 80s or 90s or whatever. And they were just like shooting this either to be funny or just like, whatever, you know, stupid kids are like, I know that me and my friends do something stupid all the time. Like I just went to the mall with my friend and we went to like, these are like the massager chairs, you know? And I was like sitting there, we, we got like 15 minutes on it for like five bucks. And I was like moaning in the middle of the mall as loud as I could to like get people to like <laughs> laugh at us or whatever. So like teenagers do stupid stuff. This, I mean, that's probably what it was, I think. I think that it wasn't like planned to be any kind of hoax. I think that it was just like a video of them having fun or whatever. Because also like Anthony keeps like removing and putting back these dental implants in the skull, in, in, in the skull. And that doesn't really seem like something that like you would get if you just like buy like a prop skull. So it's probably just like his grandpa or something or maybe his like parents work at like a at a mortuary or whatever i mean i don't think it's like a, a, a hoax because also this guy's in character for like 30 minutes bro like almost 30 minutes this video is so i think it's just like a a, a, a little like prank they were trying to do or whatever
Charlie Chaplin Time Traveler. Okay, so let's go back in time a little bit to 1928. If you don't know who Charlie Chaplin is, he's this old movie star who is like a comedian or something. I don't really know, dude, because I watch Skippity Toilet before I go to bed every night. But in 1928, he released a silent film called The Circus. And it's a normal movie, except for in the background of one of the shots, a woman appears to be holding and talking into some kind of like cell phone. And this was kind of unnoticed until 2010 when a filmmaker named George Clark posted a video on YouTube of this scene from the movie saying this is kind of weird maybe she's a time traveler using a cell phone and that I mean it's stupid as, as hell but you know anyways the video quickly 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 went super viral leading to various news articles and blog posts and there were a bunch a bunch of theories like there was one theory that the footage had been doctored and that that wasn't actually what happened in the original movie and that somebody just like went back like this George dude went back and just like edited it so it looked like she was talking into a cell phone. Some people theorized that she was a government agent that had like advanced technology, like that the government had invented cell phones before anybody else had and that she had access to it because she was a secret government agent. And then my favorite, the funniest one, is that some people say that she was using a toothache remedy. <laughs> That's so funny. But what most experts think is that she was using a hearing aid. See, back in the day, they didn't have like the hearing aids you can just like put in your ear. So they had like these like big bulky ones, which was like a microphone amplifier thing. This kind of technology was available in the 1920s and it, it makes sense. But time travel is a lot more interesting. So it could be time travel, I guess. This one, there's not much to say on. It just went viral. People thought she's a time traveler, but she's obviously not. A Day with SpongeBob SquarePants, the movie. So this one is about a reported like idea for a movie that people thought was real but it really wasn't. So basically what happened is on Amazon a DVD like came online on their site. According to the description it was going to be a documentary style film about a little boy who spends a day with Spongebob. Now there are actual like reviews on Amazon for this movie but they're all just fake. Like of people saying like oh my god don't buy this for your kids it's like really bad or whatever you know but it's just all fake. Apparently it was going to be made though because a user named CRZ on a website called The W mentions the film when discussing movies that come out on November 22nd, 2011. And he said about, about the Spongebob one, quote, I found very little on this one. Maybe they're trying to keep it under the radar and avoid litigation. So apparently it was actually going to be a real thing. It was also mentioned in November of 2011 by a music blog where they were talking about interesting DVD releases. And then it became really like an official phenomenon on January 22nd of 2012 when a page for the movie was created on the Spongebob fan and wiki. And then there's also even a song on YouTube that claims to be the movie's official theme song, even though it's really unknown if that's true or not. So that all happened in like 2012 pretty much, but when did this become popular? So in 2014, a wiki user of the Lost Media Wiki found the film on Amazon, and since he didn't really find any information about it anywhere else, he created a page for it on the Lost Media Wiki. But then, even then it didn't really have that much like coverage and it really became popular whenever Blame It On Jorge, shout out, made a video in 2015 called Top 20 Lost Kids Films, which that video got like over a million views and stuff. And then another YouTuber named Rebel Taxi made a video about it as well and that one has like over 300k. And now the Lost Media Wiki's forum for that film has over 2,000 posts, so now it's like pretty pr pretty popular. 4chan of course is also really involved here. They were talking about it on 4chan a lot and apparently they found the film's Q QR code. Also on 4chan, an employee at a branch of a company called Hastings posted on the thread that it was listed on an employee-only system and that you couldn't find it through like public searching. And this employee claimed that he ordered it and that it would arrive in two weeks and then another Hastings employee said the same thing. But then apparently that never meant anything and never like uh, turned out to be anything, sadly. The cover art is the only true image like known to be related to the movie for real. And for this reason, the 4chan board actually focused on the cover art and the identity of this boy. But apparently they found out that everything on the cover art is basically just a huge lie. First of all, the boy was confirmed to not even be in an actor in the movie when they found that the guy was just like a stock photo from the website iStock. And then the quotes at the top have also been discovered to be from non-existent people in publications. And the illustration in the background wasn't even made for the company that was like making the movie, but it was made by an artist for a real estate broker. So yeah, this was just a big, big fake thing. Nobody really knows exactly how it started or what was going on, but yeah, pretty much just fake. 
like stupid. And with that, we are going into layer three, also known as known. Starting with Eratus or Eratus. Wait, let me Google how to pronounce this. Eratus, I think. <laughs> so what exactly is Eratus? Eratus is a alleged computer algorithm that basically what it does is it conducts data surveillance of anyone that searches for the word Eratus on the internet. And it also leaves no trace of itself behind. And the theory is that this information is used by companies like Google and other massive, massive companies like that to develop AI that can like filter out humans. And by filter out humans, I mean like 1940s Germany type filtering out humans. Basically a way to eliminate the need for humanity, at least some humanity. But then there's also another theory that says that its use is to remove copyright infringement on like YouTube and stuff. But then also, I mean, it's on the internet hoaxes iceberg. So the most like smart, I guess, explanation for it is that it's just an ARG and like random coincidence. So what does Aratus actually mean? So the word Aratus is plural for the word Arata, which means error or printing mistake in Latin. But what does it do exactly and why did it become popular? So it became popular because a lot of like theories said that a lot of major corporations worldwide utilized it for their own employees, where they would fire certain employees of certain companies if the algorithm's name shows up in their file search history. Because like another thing about Aratus, like I said, is that it seems to target and delete any mention of its name online. So it was like trying to delete any trace of it existing. It all came about on 4chan, of course. I don't know how 4chan works, but it says it's on the slash x slash board. This was in late 2015. It was a com this was in late 2015, and it was about a woman who said she was given a quote shady factory job by a temporary employment agency, which are those like agencies that, like give people work temporarily because they're like down on their luck or whatever. So the post says this place was like closing down all their locations in the country and that they like treated their employees really poorly, and that's why it was in like the agency. Basically, they were in the process of cutting down all their full timers to just bad hours, replacing them with temps and having the temps do the same work for only like 10 bucks an hour. And that everything there was also like super disorganized and all the different departments were scattered everywhere and they were just getting everyone to do whatever work they could give them before they'd fire them. Like they were closing up shop and they were just like, you know, taking advantage of their employees. So anyways, they put this woman that the story is about and another dude in a room and gave them some tape guns and told them to pack stuff in boxes. And all the stuff in there was labeled or whatever, but one of the tape guns said Aratus on it. And then the dude she was working with told her to get rid of the tape gun and to never ever mention it to any of the supervisors because apparently one of his jobs years before had been writing code to flag any employee that searched for it in their computer system. Only that one word. So like apparently this dude had like coded the system that did it, you know? Not not Aratus itself, but coded the system to look for people who were looking up Aratus and to fire them. And then it got a lot deeper because another person on that forum about a month later responded and made it a lot more interesting. He asked if anybody else on the forum had any software or IT jobs on the East Coast between 2000 and 2010. And he says he asked that because he knows, and he says he asked that because he knows people from around that time and area that worked in IT and like software development that worked on a program for HR departments, like human resource departments called Aratus. And then this, this, this mystery gets even like more interesting. This one was really cool to research. So then there was a post on 4chan in the slash moo board a little while later, about another month later in 2016 by a user who wanted to create his own genre of music called deep internet and that this would be comprised of snippets and noise from like super obscure YouTube videos. And then there's a bunch of links in this post to music he was like showing us examples and one of them was called YouTube is monitoring and controlling my life. It was like a YouTube video. The channel was called Kronos for Life Jurassic Park. And in the video he's like super distressed and he's talking about how YouTube and his quote algorithms are targeting him and his deceased mother's tribute videos to Jurassic Park. And then people were kind of interested so they checked out the channel and then later on they uploaded another video which was called quote here goes nothing dot 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 where in the video it claims to be bait for the erratus algorithm to flag and delete it and then the description reads quote if it flags this one that's some spooky shit but then what gets really creepy is that so you know how like youtube has the automatic captions right that like the youtuber who uploaded it can't like can't change like like they can add their own captions right but if you hit the c button like you turn captions on on youtube and it says like youtube generated captions youtubers can't change what that says right in that video where it's like claiming to be bait for a radis, the captions read an address 200 Corbin, Kentucky 4021.9. And then also, this address is also posted on the Bandcamp page for a band called KFC Murder Chicks. But then the address was later removed. Like, you go on it now, it's not there, but it was there. And then later on in a QA video, Chronos for Life himself.
himself, like the guy who uploaded the Jurassic Park stuff and the video like claiming to be bait, he described Erratus in a Q&A video. He said, quote, All I really know about Erratus is that it's used by dozens of companies, recent as in within the last five or six years. They seem to use it as a copyright enforcement tool, which works as an excellent if you want to take down other things as well, is what it says. And then I know I've said this before, but this is where it gets super interesting. This is where we get the pictures of like the creepy Erratus stuff, right? When we talk about Todd Ellsworth. So Todd Ellsworth has a YouTube channel where in 2015, November 2015, so back when the original 4chan posts were made, he posted a video. And the content of the video is a song by the KFC Murder Chicks. And the description says Erratus or Rusts. And then Todd Ellsworth also has a Twitter page and on it only three posts have been made by him. The first one is an image of a computer generated police sketch of a suspected Maui um, R wordist. You know the R word I'm talking about. But if not, my editor will put it on screen right now. But then there's also a connection made between this Todd guy and um, the Chronos for Life guy from earlier. Because Todd Ellsworth is an anagram for The Lost World, which is a sequel to the film Jurassic Park, who Chronos for Life is like really into, you know? But that one, I mean, that could just be a coincidence. But maybe not. The KFC murder chicks are kind of interesting and enigmatic. On their Tumblr, someone asked them about Erratus and they confused the name with a Yu-Gi-Oh spell card. But then also, Blame It On Jorge pointed out that the band was called a quote, homeless girl band, and that one of the members worked in a warehouse, much like the woman described in the original 4chan post. And then in 2016, a lot of people got banned from 4chan for talking about Erratus. And I'd say I'm kind of scared that I'm going to get banned or whatever, but then Blame It On Jorge made a video about it that has like 500,000 views in six days. So <laughs> yeah, shout out that guy, bro. So there are a few theories to this one, like how it came about. The most like realistic one, I think, is um, that it's an ARG made by DJ Roswell. DJ Roswell is the guy behind the KFC Murder Chicks. He's one DJ who made a fake band. It's like an art project, you know? And a lot of people think that it's just like promotion for his band, which makes total sense. I think that's the most like realistic one that really works. Because also, like, I didn't really mention this. I didn't think it was really important to the story too much. But remember the original video that was linked from that one uh, post about the new genre of music, like the original Chronos for Life video called YouTube is Monitoring and Controlling my life. Well, in that video around two minutes in, like two and a half minutes in, there's Morse code that reads Hollywood Astral Projection Clinic. And then there's some more dumb, like nerdy stuff, like timestamps and all these numbers or whatever. It's not really interesting. I'm not going to get into it too much. You can research it yourself if you want. Um, I just, I wouldn't want to bore the video, but it's like the huge ARG that I think was made by this guy just to promote his music because he wanted to get covered on channels like Playing on Jorge. So I guess it worked. Um, I don't think it's real though, low key, because I mean, if it was real, I wouldn't be able to make this video. So I mean, I guess, I guess if you're not seeing this, maybe it's real. But anyways, this one was really long. This one's really interesting though. Brazilian Spongebob defecation broadcast. This one is <laughs> hilarious. Okay, so there was an episode of Spongebob, right, that aired in Brazil and it featured a scene where Squidward plays a note that, um, let's just call it the brown note. Now, the actual brown note has been completely, like, disproven. The brown note is not real. So this whole thing is not real. It's just a funny joke online. It's hilarious though. Um, the brown note is a note that when you hear it, it makes you, it makes you, uh, uh, empty your bowels. So this one is a complete hoax. People were talking about it on like new grounds and other forums like that. It's it's hilarious that there's like a, a SpongeBob broadcast that makes you just completely poop your pants. And what most people find or like uh, agree on is that the episode is probably SP129, where in the beginning Squidward was like gonna play the clarinet, but he gets interrupted a bunch. And there's actually no footage of this online because apparently the CIA and government orders told people like they like removed all posts of it because basically like to not deter tourism to Brazil it's, it's so funny but let's move on this is a short one and now we are moving from layer three into layer four which is known as kind of known Celine Delgado Lopez this one you might remember from my missing persons iceberg but I'm gonna go a lot more in depth here um go check out that video if you want it's a pretty fire video but anyways so Celine Delgado Lopez is the name of a girl who went missing in Mexico in the late 90s to early 2000s. So on the Mexican TV channel Canal 5, there's a broadcast show called, okay, bear with me guys, I'm gonna try to pronounce this, Quebethio a la Comunidad. Now this TV channel would broadcast this show around midnight, and what this show was is it was a community service broadcast that lists all the names of missing people in hopes of their whereabouts being reported to the authorities by the viewers. But then in 2001, one of these missing persons kind of stood out from the rest. This girl, Celine Delgado Lopez, who was 
18 years old at the time of her disappearance. No information is known about her other than her name, Selena Garda Lopez, age, 18, and the location of her disappearance, which is in Mexico City, compared to the rest of the missing people's bios which were completely, like, greatly detailed. Now, the legend behind this, like, person began when viewers were, like, really uncomfortable and afraid because of the picture that was used here. Some people even claim that as soon as the picture shows up on screen, the TV channel would freeze for a few minutes, and even glitch out before it, like, cuts to static. And then as a result of this, an urban legend spread, claiming that Celine died and that her spirit haunts Canal 5 when her pictures appear in the broadcast. But then some other people just said that it was, like, cursed, the picture was cursed. <laughs> but then these weren't even taken seriously, they were just, like, seen as, like, ghost stories or whatever. But then some more realistic rumors started to spread. People saw this picture and they realized how uncanny and weird she looks, so people thought maybe she's AI generated. And this led to experts starting to, like, dig deeper, and they discovered that there's no public record of Selene Delgado's disappearance. And this caused people to believe a lot of the other, like, old, like, theories and stuff about, like, how it would, like, freeze the TV or whatever. Now here's where a lot of the hoax part comes in. So around the time that Celine reportedly disappeared, there was an image made that looks like this. There's actually a composite of Derek Todd Lee, aka the Baton Rouge Slayer, but people thought that it looked so much like Celine that it actually, like, people started thinking that it was Celine. Maybe this was the picture that the AI used to generate the other image, because remember, people still think that the other image is, like, AI generated. And then a group of people on the internet called Floresty to Dreams makes this claim, and, and apparently they prove it according to them by using a 3D modeling program to demonstrate that Celine's face was made from an amalgamation of other images, both real people and other composites. And if this is true, then it means the broadcasters of Serbetio a la Comunidad intentionally chose to include this fake person in their segment. This picture certainly left a lasting impact on everyone who saw it, so it's possible it was included as some kind of warning to young viewers to like stay safe, like to kids or whatever. And then it was kind of confirmed that they did just want to scare people because in 2010, their Twitter page would like post these like scary things, referencing Celine, so. But now we can get into the Facebook incident, which is what probably most of you guys know this from. So so in 2020, this urban legend re-emerged after the discovery of a Facebook page of a middle-aged woman named Celine Delgado Lopez. People discovered to their terror that they've been already added as her friend despite having no connection to her. And also like nobody ever added her but they were still on their friends list. And to make it even worse, there was no option to unfriend her on Facebook. So that's kind of scary. People have these theories like, oh my god, she's like, she's a ghost, she's haunting everybody, ah! But it turns out she was just a normal person who changed her privacy settings to like removing the add friend button from her profile, and she just happened to have the same name as the other person. So nobody really knows, I mean, there's the one theory that she was an actual person, and that it just kind of got, like, buried, right? But it was just kind of like a creepy photo or whatever. There's another theory that Canal 5 made it to mess with people, and there's also the third theory that I think is kind of the most interesting one, where it was a fake thing, but Canal didn't know it, they just got, like, this image sent to them by an anonymous person, and then they included it, and it just became, like, a prank or whatever. But nobody knows. Cubo's fake shit shutdown hoax. This one's really interesting and I really could not find much information online except for this one video by Wavy Websurf. Um, shout out this guy, I'm getting pretty much all my information for this one from his video. Great video. Yeah. So basically if you don't know what Kubo is, it's kind of like PBS, like PBS Kids, you know? Which I grew up in PBS Kids because I was like homeschooled and my dad never let me watch anything other than PBS Kids because he thought like Spongebob was bad for me or something, you know? I mean, shout out my dad, my dad's awesome, but that was kind of weird. <laughs> but PBS Kids was fire though, so I'm not complaining. So Cuba was like a free-to-watch network that was enjoyed by Gen Z and Gen Alpha, and it shut down in 2021, which led obviously to nostalgia and disappointment. But then what happened is a video online surfaced called Cubo's Final Moments, and this was showing Cubo's shutdown. The video showed a static screen and then a background with Cubo cartoon characters like on it. But then a message demanded money, and it like threatened the demise of the network. And then as the countdown progressed, characters were graphically like badly killed on screen and the video ended with a message blaming the viewers for it closing because they didn't like submit enough money or whatever i guess now this video pretty obviously caused a whole lot of discussion and stir online where some people even claimed to have witnessed it and like seen it happen but then a lot of people thought that it was just like fake you know because there were other recordings of cuba shutdown that showed just a normal uneventful shutdown and also this fake video had a lot of grammatical errors and it used music from the game majora's mask which is 
is a Legend of Zelda game, if you didn't know. Also, guys, how we doing, guys? Uh, drop down in the comments, question of the day, what's your favorite butterfly breed? Also, like, the amount of money that they were looking for was not nearly, nearly enough to, like, keep a network afloat. And also, the upload date of the video conflicted with the actual shutdown date. And so, calling the donation number in the video led to, guess what, a Rick roll. So, yeah, it was obviously a fake. And still, nobody really knows who made this video or, like, what was going on, you know? But it was very scary. Very scary. I mean, we kind of know who it is. We kind of think that it's this guy named Super Keegan 9100 because he debunked the video and warned about it, but then people started like dogging on him <laughs> and he got scared. So I don't know. I mean, it could be him, could not be him. We don't really know. The G Man virus. The G Man virus is kind of interesting. So it's a virus for the game Gary's Mod, which, if you don't know by now, where have you been, bro? Gary's Mod is a game that was made from the Half Life 2 and Portal 2 and the, all those Source engines. Or it was made from the Source engine. Dude, you guys get so mad when I misspeak about the Source engine, bro. Y'all, ooh, man. Anyways, I love you guys. <laughs> so it's a virus where if you download like the wrong add-on or go on an infected server, you will get this G-Man virus. Now I'm gonna read directly from a forum I found, which is really interesting because this is from 14 years ago, which must have been 2010, on gamefacts.gamespot.com from a guy named Nelson340. It says, basically, if you have the virus, it makes it so that after a few minutes of playing, this happens. One, you see a blurry, eyeless G-Man head occupied by an annoying screech. Two, in either Firefox or Internet Explorer, a bunch of tabs open that all play a sound of someone saying, I'm looking at gay P-O-R-N-O. <laughs> Three, in Steam, you get connected to a chat room called Nymphed by Chris Astor. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. This is so funny. <laughs> and then here, I'll have my editor to put a video of what it looks like on screen right now. Not sure what else to say about this one. Um, that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah, I don't know, guys. That's about it, I think. And with that, we are going into layer five. It is getting weirder down here. Starting with Reddit serial killer hoax it's at George Mason University. This is actually kind of funny. So they invented this alleged serial killer named Joseph Scaife. So the students in this class created a blog called I Think My Uncle Was a Serial Killer. It was in a WordPress blog, by the way. Also, these students created a fake persona named Lisa Quinn who was making this blog. And in the blog, Lisa wrote that she found some odd items in a Saratoga steamer trunk that she received upon the death of her grandparents. Lisa posted pictures of the trunk, ladies' shoes that she found in it, newspaper clippings from 1895, and one of which was about the murder of Alice Walsh. And according to Lisa's post, the trunk belonged to a relative, Joseph Scaife, and it contained, in a false panel, ladies' jewelry in a disturbing journal. Lisa wanted to know if, in the the opinion of her readers, her uncle was a serial killer. And then these students made another fake account where they brought up the WordPress blog to Reddit and asked people if they think that this was like true or not. And then it started to spread through Reddit. A lot of people requested like more photos, but then they, they, they didn't give any more photos. But then it was kind of like a failed hoax because even within 26 minutes, suspicions were rising. They found out they were kind of sus. Apparently the Lisa girl gave two names of two victims, Alice Walsh and Diamond Flossie. And she asked the Redditors for assistance and research, but then a Wikipedia search would make it really obvious they were just like fake. <laughs> like, it's really, it's really dumb. The Wikipedia entries of these people, by the way, they're connected through Wikipedia, which means that they were like found together, right? And like made together. And the entries were made only two weeks prior and the pictures looked fake. So it was like, it was, it was a dumb thing. And people got mad. People, people started saying that this guy was like doing like Wikipedia vandalism, which is so funny. I guess this is why you can't use Wikipedia in your school papers or whatever. FNAF Original Trailer. Okay, so if you don't know, there's a game called Five Nights at Freddy's that was released in 2014, and it gained a massive following. There's a movie out of it now. The movie's fire as hell, and if you think differently, you're stupid. Just kidding. Um, no, it's actually fire though. But anyway, so on June 14th, 2014, the creator of the game, Scott Cawthon, uploaded an official trailer to his YouTube channel. But then after this, a user named Wallamy commented about the existence of another trailer. But it was just a comment, so it was kind of like, you know, no proof really. Years later, in 2020, 
2020, a Redditor managed to contact Walmead, who then claimed that the trailer he referenced was no longer on Scott's channel and featured an endoskeleton that's not present in the final game. The statement led to further community investigation, including a deep dive into Scott's old Google Plus account via the Wayback Machine. In here, they found three deleted videos. Two were later re-uploaded by Scott. The third, titled Five Nights, was not, and the missing video was suspected to be this elusive trailer. However, the search kind of fell flat when Walmead himself debunked the existence of this trailer in a Twitter post. He clarified that the original comment was misunderstanding and that he was actually referring to the red-eyed endoskeleton image in the current trailer, not a different one. But then despite this debunking about the original trailer, the content of this Five Nights video remains a really interesting mystery. In a separate exploration on a forum, there is a mention of an alternate trailer found on YouTube, but its legitimacy was questioned and it was largely dismissed as like being fake. Medieval found footage. So someone uploaded a video on YouTube claiming it was real medieval footage and it got people talking. Turns out it's not actually medieval at all. The video is actually scenes from a 1963 Spanish movie called El Valle de las Espadas, Espadas, <laughs> known in English as the Castilian. The movie tells the story of Fernan Gonzalez, who was a big deal in the 10th century. He was the Count of Castile and started a dynasty that eventually became kings of Castile in the 11th century. He's a legendary figure, even inspiring a 13th century epic poem. In real life, he was deeply involved in the politics of the Leonese and Navarrese kingdoms in northern Spain during the 10th century. Anyways, now about the places shown in the video. They're all located in the Duero River Colony, in what's now known as Castile y Leon, Spain. The first castle you see in this video at Berlanga de Duero in the province of Soria mainly dates back to the 15th and 16th century, so it's a bit newer than medieval times. The next one, around four seconds in the video, is the castle at Pinafiel in Valladolid. This one started being built in his time in the 10th century, but most of it was actually built in the 14th and 15th centuries. Then there's a church at the 15 second mark called Santo Domingo de Soria. It's from the late 12th century, but it got some updates in the 16th century. And the ruin closer at 20 seconds is from the San Juan de Duero Monastery in Soria, dating back to the 12th and 13th centuries. So most of us in the film wouldn't have even been around in Fernan Gonzalez's time in the 10th century. Plus the area around Soria, along the eastern Duero River, was actually under the Umayyad Salafate back then. It wasn't part of the county of Castile during Fernan Gonzalez's lifetime, and only became a part of Aragon when Alfonso conquered it in the 12th century. That was a history lesson. I'm sorry, guys. I just didn't know what to say for this one. I mean, I didn't want to just say, oh, there was a fake video of medieval found footage. So I wanted to give you a little bit of information. <laughs> and that leads us into layer six. You have been a scientist. Everyday chemistry. So about a decade ago, there is this guy who called himself James Richards. He set up this website claiming he had an adventure like no other. He said he traveled to another dimension and managed to bring back a Beatles album that in our world never existed. But here's the twist. His website isn't what it used to be. It's now got some odd online marketplace. However, before all that changed, he managed to upload this mysterious album to YouTube, calling it Everyday Chemistry. The title is pretty spot on because the tracks are a mix and match of different elements from the Beatles solo works and lesser known songs. There's an article out there that dives into the story. The writer was super curious about who was behind the whole thing. Yes, this one is just fake. It was like a Beatles album that was really just made of like, it was like one of those like, uh, like, oh, new Travis Scott album, Utopia, like a year ago when it was really just like a uh, people taking the acapellas and beats and stuff and like making something new. It was just that with like lesser known Beatles songs and their solo works and stuff. So it was just fake. And with that, we are done with the internet hoaxes iceberg. I sincerely hope you all enjoyed this iceberg and everybody have a great night. Sweet dreams.